There's a bit of a competition right now between those who would like to use biological components for computation, so the tiny human brains that you can literally grow in a jar if you want to and hook up to a computer, and those who are trying to make neuromorphic AI, so AI systems that behave very much like our brains. And there has been a lot of progress. I've talked to you guys about artificial neurons, which can actually be interfaced into our neurons, but neuromorphic AI is a little bit different. It takes the capacity of our own brains, the way that we process nonlinear information and turn it into linear, and tries to bring it back into a computer system. This actually works really well, but so do our little brain friends. One of the great limitations on these guys is how long you can grow them for. When this research first started, they could last about a month before they eventually died of apoxia. Now we can keep them alive for a year or more. The idea of giving them oxygen with an artificial circulatory system really isn't out of the question any longer, so we could potentially keep them alive indefinitely. We're not there yet, but I don't think it's too far away. We also know that the longer that they grow, the better they get. They can process more complex information, and they can do it better. Of a sort, although people actually have turned this into literal, virtual brain organoids. Brain organoids, and yes, those are eyes. Do they work? Yes. They're ocular cups, the same structures that would develop in a person when they're a fetus, that would eventually become adult eyes. These guys can do a lot of stuff that AI on its own cannot. Traditional AI systems are really good at linear thought, so the ability to be able to do a bunch of calculations really quickly, neither your brain nor the organoids can do that. However, they can learn to play video games faster and better than AI systems can. This was shown when they played Pong. Does that say sentience? Yes, they are technically sentient. That's because these guys are capable of having an experience. That's the basic definition of sentience. The ability to experience something and then respond to it, which these guys can. In fact, you can even train them on dopamine and disordered signals. They like dopamine, don't like disorder. As for whether or not they experience pain, not to my knowledge, not yet, although they have been in charge of running several different kinds of robots, with artificial neurons that could interface with real neurons, I could see them having proprioception and even the ability to experience pain. Now, what these guys are really good at is nonlinear thought. It's what we have to do when we operate our bodies. Brain organoids are capable of operating things that are soft and fleshy. Actually, neural reservoirs can too, and I covered that when we talked about virtual brain organoids. Now, when it comes to the difference between artificial brain organoids or real brain organoids, they don't really need to be divorced. What you see above me is the first commercial brain organoid operated computer put out by Cortical Labs. Now, you don't have to pay $30,000 to operate your own brain organoid computer because you'd have to grow them too. You can just pay $500 a month to have access to a neural platform. Now, when we're talking about using these guys, we have to understand what they're good at. Brain organoids excel at spatial recognition and the ability to use a body, which would make sense because, you know, we're kind of evolved to use a body. I don't think the idea of having artificial brain organoids and having linear AI systems and having real brain organoids needs to be divorced at all. We already know that we can interface them with AI systems. There's been experiments that have demonstrated that they can learn language and even recognize voices. Much like AI systems that use neuromorphic systems that match human brains and work fine between them, I think we could do that for the brain organoids too. We've already seen success in using neural reservoirs for regular linear AI systems. Neural reservoirs can be an area where information can be stored so it doesn't collapse the entire model. It's a little bit like association. So if you need to access a certain bit of information, it's kind of like remembering that class you took in college so you can remember, I don't know, what is the ventral or dorsal fin. Those associations will go into that reservoir. What I think brain organoids could be really good at is operating agency. While they might not be able to handle that massive amount of information, I think we could use them to help make decisions. Agentic coding for AIs happen when you give it a job and give it the ability to carry it out on its own. I think a brain organoid could be really useful for having that real human spontaneity. I'm going to keep working and figure out if I could do that with an artificial neural reservoir and maybe eventually figure out if we could do that with a brain organoid. Although fair warning, I did talk to Cortical Labs about this idea and they were not optimistic, but I do think I could make that work. I'll keep you updated.